Hey, Renee, I'm back. And also, it's 2020, a new year. So, I decided, backing up a bit, <clears throat> Pookie, Randy, Happy, Me. That's what is this. Well, it's the name of the channel. I know I spell it wrong, it's with one O. I didn't know this before recently, but so yeah, I decided to start saying name of name and channel when I'm doing the intro. Because I feel like it. Okay, so this video is going to be my December wrap up. I decided <clears throat> I decided to do a, a smaller wrap up in the way that uh, the first week of December I did his the season and I already did a TBR and a wrap up for that so the book that I read for that I won't include for this but I will include I will include I will link to the this the season that's on wrap, wrap up in the video so you can see what I started the, this month with this month last month with it's going so fast you know um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, so beside the this is seasonal phone reader phone, I didn't actually read that much because even though I thought like oh I'm gonna read all the books in the summer, I didn't because I had a cold for lots of it. I got a new cold now. I actually lost the cold in the last week of the summer, and then I got it back over the weekend. Yay! Well, I got it back. I got up. Pull back. I cold again. But yeah, anyway. Um so yeah, uh, I had a cold so I didn't read that much. Uh it was December, so I had more job I had more job shifts and also uh it was December so I had my family over. So I went went and spent time with the family. So all that added up to me not reading as much much as I thought I would. But hey, that's what happens really. But still, I did read a bit, and I would say overall, December was a good reading month for me. It was not too bad. I DNF'd maybe one or two books, so that's not really too bad. Um, all these are the books I read in December, and this is the only DNF. So yeah, just one DNF. Can't say that's too bad. So now I'm going to tell you about them. <gasps> so weird. That's what wrap up, wrap up is. But yeah. So I finally finished Heart of Iron. I started in November. Well, I started. I read two chapters in November, and then I read the rest of this in December. It's Anastasia Romanoff retelling set in space. I usually don't really like space books that much, but I heard good things about this one. But I think that's kind of why I didn't read it so much before when I've planned to read it before because it's space so you kind of have to be like in the mindset to read it and I was just tired and I wasn't really in the mood for space books but then one day I thought you know what I'm gonna read you and I read a few chapters like read the second and th uh, third and fourth chapter and then I'm like oh this book is really uh, intriguing and really good I'm gonna keep on reading it and then I read the whole book in one go, in one day. So yeah, I just kind of had to get past like the first like uh, understanding of the world and the universe. But when I got through that part, just like let's say a full chapter, third chapter, I was really enjoying it. So yeah, I gave this a uh, <clears throat> five star. No, I think I actually gave it five billion stars because I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and just FYI, there's a really fun um, a gale of relationship in this one, which I really, really enjoy. And then there's lots of family drama and uh, and plot lines that you can't um, that you can't predict, I guess. And uh, lots of fun, uh, lots of fun humor, and just all the funness. And yeah, really, really recommend this one. Then, <clears throat> this one won't, probably won't be a surprise, because I already did a review of this, but it's No Big Deal by Brittany Rutter. I read, well, 
Sorry. Both of these, well, I suppose all of these fit for in one way or another, fit for a theme of December. I forgot to say that. I did a diverse December, so I read uh, only, only diverse reads. This one has ethnic diversity and sexual diversity, as I said. And this one has fat rep. I really, really enjoy this fat rep book. It's a contemporary book and it's fat rep and it's done in a very good way. I suppose you could say, Ura, no, Renee, why are you saying that? I mean, you're not fat. I suppose now I'm not, people, also people say I'm not fat and stuff. I used to be bigger. I suppose I've never been huge. But, uh, I suppose I kind of felt fat, fatter than I was, ever was really. So I really relate to fat rep books and fat rep stuff. Uh, so yeah, and I've I've been going to, well, I suppose that's not something, no, uh, that's very common, but like when I go to clothing stores and when I have to, like, one store I have to use medium and next store I have to use large and one store is small, it's just very confusing and weird and when they Clothes look fitting when you see them, but then you try them all, like, what? This is suddenly so small. So you know that relationship with my body and with clothes. Yeah, I have that. So yeah, uh, no big deal. It's a really, really good book for Fat Rap, if you want to read that more uh, contemporary. Highly recommend it. I'll link the, uh, my review in Doobledoo. And yeah, I forgot to say in my review, actually. This one actually has both lesbian and also feminist... Uh, Feminist uh, subplots or the aspect aspects, so yeah, a really good fact as well. And then I read, I started All the Invisible Things by Ola Collins. It's been on some lists from last year because it's uh, the protagonist is bisexual. I read, I think I kind of got halfway, or I read like hundred pages, hundred fifty, something like that. I didn't hate it. Uh, I suppose kind of the fault of this one was because I was more like looking forward to all the other books that I was planning to read that week. Well, actually, I read this last week, so it was recently. But yeah, and if I ended up doing nothing, but doing nothing it because I wasn't loving it. And even though it was fine, I didn't really feel motivated to finish this. So yeah, I didn't have it. I felt like, yeah, it's fun to read bisexual but no, <clears throat> bisexual stories, I suppose, like, it, even though most of, or a lot of the um, sexual diverse books either are gay or gay protagonists, or you have less protagonists, you don't really have them in a bisexual, but you do have some, and this, I wasn't that interested, so I did have it. What I did read was good, but, yeah. So, recommending it it's halfway. Read it on your own, on your own. Uh, read it if you, if you, just knowing that it's not perfect. I suppose no, most books aren't, but yeah. <coughs> Sorry. And then just my head look big in this by Randa Abdel Fata. This is actually a reread for me. Uh, it's about a Palestinian Australian teen living yeah. living in Australia. Uh, but it was it, this book came out in two thousand and five, and so you don't really have you have like you don't have the Facebook aspect or Snapchat. So there's a lot of stuff that's missing in this book, but it's still a very fun look at how to be uh, Muslim and still living in a Western part of the world, and you have. Uh, the protagonist, uh, which is a man, and her family, her parents aren't like uber, they're like, I would say in the middle, they're like, they're not uber liberal, but they're not very conservative, <coughs> sorry, they're not very conservative either, it's kind of in the middle there. So you have her family, but then you have the family of her friends, who, who are all uh, very, or have conservative or liberal they are. Uh, and yeah, so for most of it, stuff doesn't. It's not like a huge plot book where lots of stuff happens. But mm, sorry, against the end, some stuff happens, and then you're like, oh, oh, okay, 
this is how it's going down. Interesting. It's kind of, I suppose, plot twist-ish. And, yeah. So, I suppose, don't pick this up if you need stuff to happen all the time. It's a very character-based book. Stuff happens, but it's not like it happens all the time. It's more like small things in her day-to-day -day life, really, that you see. I've seen some other people in Goodreads reading this because of scum and because of recent years and not enjoying it. I enjoyed it. Well, I was reading it, so of course I enjoyed it. I really much enjoyed it first time, and I enjoyed it second time, this time. Uh, I suppose, like, the beginning was, like, a good, and then there was a few chapters of thinking, like, oh, was it bad? Do I remember it wrong? Was it this bad? But then it would just turn good, so it was just a few chapters I didn't enjoy. So, I would say pick this one up if you want to see a Muslim character in a Western world setting. So, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> then you have The Second Deception by Colin Gleason. It's actually the last book in the series, which is quite sad. I actually shed a few tears reading this. It was very emotional. It wasn't it's not a bad book, it's not a sad book, it was just emotional because it's the last book, I don't want it to end. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, this book in it in it, in itself. It's really good. I would highly recommend that. Though, of course, it's the last book in the series, so read the other books, read them first. And yeah, you have to read the other books first. Because this is one of the series where it's a series series. It's not an episode series, so you need to read them all. Especially this one. Yeah, actually, especially you need to read this, uh, the penultimate book before reading this one. Because this ties up to a lot of stuff in the proof book. I suppose you know, don't read all the books, but yeah. This book is why I steampunk. It has mystery, it has a uh, dual point of view, it has both intelligent females and um, hits before they think females. So it's something about for everyone, really. You have time travel, it's not a huge aspect, though it's there. Uh, your family drama and plot twist and uh, oh ho oh, oh, ho it's so so good. I kind of want to okay slight spoiler. Well, it is a spoiler. So if you read this one, don't uh, listen to it from moment. I'm just gonna have to find the stuff. Where? Why did I not find? Okay, just gonna pause a bit. Yeah, I just had to find this um, as this quote because it's just so so good. Uh, but yeah, it's a spoiler quote. So if you not read this book or if you don't care about spoilers, then you can, sorry. If you read this book and or if you don't care about spoilers, you can stay. But if not, go away until this book is away. So, <clears throat> the worst, absolute worst, Harvey Wall, was, was that now I was supposed to be mourning, be in mourning, for that I never wanted to marry, and his brother, who'd tried to kill me. <laughs> it's just such a fun, fun, great quote. I just, I just love that quote. So yeah, now it's safe. Um, so yeah, this book, very, very good. The series amazing really you should check it out it's highly underrated and highly highly amazing then i read cream buns and crime by robin stevens this one fitted very well because it's a <clears throat> sorry it's a collection of short stories and short texts it both it <clears throat> sorry it both has new stories in this universe, the Wilson Wong universe. Well, sorry, A Murder Most Unladylike. You can say both Wilson Wong and A Murder Most Unladylike. Uh, yeah, it bo both includes new stories, but also new old stories that's previously just been ebooks. And it also has some chapters where there's like, um, uh, it's um, words, um, True crime stories for like the cruel unsolved mysteries of the world. You also have 
a, fo- a tech a chapter with this a focus on uh, crime authors. You have a chapter with this focus on um, detective uh, and like um, detective characters like Sherlock Holmes, Uncle Poirot, etc., etc. So yeah, and it's not huge, you see. It's not like a huge story, huge book. So if you want something to read but you're busy, this one is not a bad book. It's a very good choice of that one. I very much enjoyed it, and yeah, honestly, all the stories in there was new to me, were new to me, and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And and it's also some, actually, there's also some uh, recipes at the end of this, so that's good. And <coughs> sorry, sorry. And yeah, highly enjoyed this one. And then I actually didn't really do an order of this, as you can. Have uh, notice this one I read during the last part of the month. The month, but yeah, but this one is actually my last read of 2019. A red, white, and royal blue. I got it just before the end. The year ended. And you, the end year ended. <laughs> and yeah, it's just as awesome as people say. It's so 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 good. I love it. So 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 good. Swoony romance, but it also has a great family aspect. I suppose, uh, yeah, it is mostly the story of the story of Alex. Though you get some as in in you get some <coughs> sorry you get some look into the life of Henry as well. Though mostly in, it's Alex Alex's story, and you have some of the some of the aspects. Uh, story plot lines is his family his friends, and I really like the political aspects of this book as well, even though the romance is a huge, biggest part of this one. And, uh, yeah. There, some people think this is YA. I think people first misread this as YA. It is uh, new adults. It is new adults. You have sex stuff, uh, like, literal lots of, oh, lots. Oh, yeah. You have quite a few sex scenes. You have uh, swearing, so I suppose young adults can read this, but just be aware it's not clean. You have swearing, you have sex, just so you know. And yeah, and that was all that I read for December after the first week. I hope uh, you had a good reading week, reading week, reading month for December as well. And uh, this is me, Sing Renee, out. Uh, it's me. I'm back. I forgot about to mention that there's three books I forgot about. I read actually read read read. I listened to one Urkel Poro books on book books book on audiobook, uh, and I also read one of the Urkel Poro books uh, on pocket book paperbacks, and then the last one. A moment here. Now we just want to. Completely true. I don't screw it up again. Um, yeah. And the absolute last one is Slay. But Slay, I got from library, so I don't have it anymore here. Well, the other two I got from library as well. But I'll link them in a doodle And Slay, yeah, was really good. Really good. It reminded me of Hug in a lot of ways. And uh, I suppose. People are over, people have said as well. It's it is kind of it's like thug, slug. It kind of it's like thug, but just like with it in the game room aspects. So yeah, I really like that. And uh, yeah, bye.